Our next presenter is Kevin Bonnie Bonnie. 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 It's Kevin Bonnie who will discuss the creation of blended learning life science courses customized through a combination of open educational resources and in-person instruction and offer suggestions on how to adapt OERs to promote student-centered learning in a wide array of courses. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I've been noticing these, these chairs up here. I feel like I should ask for some volunteers to come up and I can get behind you. <laughs> I should take them down because they're blocking the bottom of our screen. Will you use the bottom of the screen as much? No, I think it's um, and unfortunately, I don't know how to different times, but <laughs> perhaps I can lull a couple of you to sleep just by that. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about integrating science into the New York University Liberal Studies curriculum, and then I'll um, show some examples of tools I'm using to do that. A lot of people know NYU is a really big school. Uh, fewer people know that we have a Liberal Studies program, and even fewer people know this is our second largest group of undergraduates. Um, this is a typical schedule for our students in their first two years. We have um, all the students take writing in their first year. There's a two uh, course sequence. They take cultural foundations, which is essentially arts and literature and culture. Um, social foundations, which is uh, philosophy and political science. Um, and those are each three course sequences. And then um, they take some other courses. We try to get all of our students to take two science courses, and we offer four different science courses. I teach uh, one of them mostly called life science, which is essentially biology. Um, another thing you should know about our students, all of our students that stay with us for all four years spend at least a year studying abroad. And there's a lot of logistical advantages to having um, this well-defined set of courses. And when we try to fit science into this this grid of courses that we have, um, usually you can see science, we have lecture, and then we have lab. And our science classes were meeting for more time than our other courses. So it wasn't really fitting into this nice box. So one thing we did in order to integrate our courses was we had to cut out some of our time. And um, what we lost was our lab time. Um, but of course, having the lab component, having the students do hands-on work is very important for learning science. So we had to re-engineer our science course and there were some obstacles to getting it to fit in here. So one was the time that I mentioned. We had to cut it down basically by a third of the time. Um, also resources. So if we didn't have the lab time, our lab space was taken away from us. And now we had to figure out how can we get the students to do hands-on activities in a classroom in the same amount of time that their other classes meet for the lecture. Um, and then also we want to maintain relevance because most of our students are not science majors. Um, they're one of those other things. Um, and so we try to make connections between our courses and their other courses. So the first thing we did is we turned our class into um, flipped classroom. So made online lectures that the students could um, view before class. Um, and I'll talk about those later. And that freed up our class time so we could have more active learning activities. So we do a lot of discussions rather than lecturing. And we have hands-on activities. So whatever lab-like activities we can do in the classroom without worrying the facilities management people, as well as we use some uh, technological resources. We've also been working on making a completely online class. And this is actually the first online class for most of NYU undergrads. And we're actually starting this, um, teaching it next week for the first time. So there's absolutely no pressure that it will work well. No one's saying that. Uh, so that's something we're working on. Now, it would be a big jump to go right from a traditional classroom to making this online class. But it helps to have this intermediate step. We were already teaching with the online component um, and the in-class component. And then, of course, we make um, some connections with our other classes. I don't have much time to talk about how we do that, although that's very important. Okay, so you can see over here, traditional class, right, science classes, we have a textbook that the students don't read, board class, um, then we use our class time, we lecture, um, answer some questions at the end, and then we have some homework. And so for our blended learning class, which we've been doing the last couple of years, we make these interactive online modules, we don't call them lectures. Um, it's my lecture slides, it's me talking, we embed questions and put videos in there, um, and some other activities to make it more interactive. And then the students take a quiz 
on the material that they cover at home before they come to class. And those quizzes actually, the only time I've ever received on a student evaluation a student say, I really liked that I had to take this test or this quiz, were these quizzes. The students actually reported some of them. It was really helpful to have that quiz. It kept me on top of things. I knew what I needed to know. Um, so those go over pretty well. Then we use some virtual labs that are freely available, um, as well as hands-on activities that we do in class. OI articles, open access articles um, about scientific topics we'll discuss in class. And then we also use an open access textbook. Um, I'll tell you what that is later. I put that at the end, because I actually designed the course so the students don't necessarily need to read the textbook. I'm giving them the background information in the module. And then we come to class and we reinforce that with our activities. And then this is just a secondary, secondary resource that if the students feel like they need more of an explanation. Some students really like textbooks, like two of them. So they can read that textbook <laughs> later, um, and that's available. And then of course, switching over to our fully online class, we use the same modules we've already made, same types of quizzes. We can use our virtual labs that we're doing in class. Um, I may substitute, add some videos um, to make up for what we're not doing in class. We use online forums for discussion instead of in class, and they have the same textbook. So um, just put up here, um, you can see the types of resources we're using. So there's multimedia, um, open access textbooks, instructional technology, so one you can't see, and then the interactive online modules. I was looking at this um, this morning, kind of reminds me of that game Simon from the 80s. <laughs> so you have a sequence of these different things that you have to remember, and as you start out and you're doing everything right, you feel really smart and it's kind of exciting. And eventually you have such a long sequence that you make a mistake and it gets really frustrating. Um, but with the game assignment, just like changing the format of your course, you get better with practice. So um, having the intermediate step, I think, has really helped us to prepare for the online course. So just show you some specific examples of what we're doing. This is a screen capture from one of the modules that I made. So you can see here's um, the menu. There's uh, different topics, and then there's embedded review questions. And this fits right into our course management system. We use a program called SCORM, S-C-O-R-M, to make this module. Um, so you can see when I describe things, we'll have images. The students can hover over some of the words, and the definition will come up. Um, so they can go through these. And then um, this is actually, it's hard to see, but this is a drag and drop question. So they can have some interaction where they're dragging the answers to match. It's not just a uh, multiple choice. There's different options. You can have them label pictures. Um, not as advanced as some of the things we saw in the, in the first talk, but we have different things that we can do um, in there. And of course, the students can stop at any point. Um, because it's set up by slides, my narration is slide by slide. So when they stop, they know exactly where they left off. They can come back. They can review it again. There's an option to have these questions go directly into the gradebook. I don't use that option. Um, I have them take a separate quiz because then it's easier to change the questions, but um, that's a possibility here. Um, so I put up this picture to remind me. So um, the earlier speakers talked about how do you make this personal connection if the students are in a hybrid course or a fully online course, you don't see them all the time. Um, and so we thought about how would we do that. So our lectures start off with our picture, but then my picture goes away. And I know I'm, I'm very distracting to look at, so I didn't want me to be there, and the students wouldn't pay attention. Um, so I'm there, and then they can hear my voice. Um, we had other options, so I could have done the same thing that our, our last speaker did, um, filmed myself, and you could see me talking. We actually, a lot of large universities have a, um, a green screen where I could have gone and walked around like I do in class, and then you could see me walking around on there. Um, but I didn't choose to do that. So I just uh, recorded myself into the slides. One thing that we are going to add is video office hours so the students can meet with us. Um, another thing, since our students in this online class, the first ones to take it are going to be our students studying away. So they're going to be in 10 different time zones. And so we'll have to try to find time that we can meet with each student. So there's a couple other examples of 
tools that we use, and I can provide a list of resources later if anyone would like. The virtual labs, um, these ones are um, produced by Glencoe, which is now part of another company. Um, this is one lab I really like. The students can click on this microscope and they'll see a bunch of histology slides of different types of cells. They can click on the computer and there's actually a little video of what happens in mitosis. And then there's a little lab sheet that they can fill in and it will email their answers to me. Um, and so they have labs on many different types of topics. Um, so I like that. So a couple other virtual labs some of my colleagues use. Um, case studies. Now, um, case studies for science teaching, if you've never used them, they're a little bit different than case studies that are used in medical education or business education. Information presented with the narrative. The difference that we use in science education is sometimes it's, this is a narrative about a specific person with a disease. Um, sometimes it's about a disease outbreak, a little more general. Um, and sometimes it's a fictional scenario that's just describing a topic. But it follows a narrative, and then there's questions embedded. Um, this one is one that I wrote about discovery of DNA structure. It's published by National Center for Case Study Teaching and Science. They're a great resource. They have about 600 cases. They're also great for making interdisciplinary connections. So one time I taught um, the physics for non-majors course. I'm trying to figure out um, what could I do to engage the students who are interested in physics. And they have some cases, for example, um, analyzing art to determine how old it is using chemistry and then how that fit into a real legal case um, about a painting's authenticity. So they have a lot of great resources there. Um, so as you can see, there's a narrative, then there's questions, and I can't read it. Um, also, as part of that case study, I made this video. So this is a very short video that I made um, with stop motion um, that's on YouTube. Um, uh, showing, this is a, a hands-on activity I do in class where we um, demonstrate the mesocentric style experiment, if you're familiar with that, um, using gumdrops and marshmallows. So we'll do this in class, but I also made this video so the students can watch it later, or maybe another instructor can use this video without having the students do that. So that's available um, on this top <laughs> source. Of course, HHMI has great videos. A lot of people don't know about this one, but Virginia and Commonwealth University, they have a lot of great um, educational videos as well. Another example, um, lectures that you could use if you want. Um, before I made my own online lectures, I would recommend students, you could watch these other lectures um, if you want more information. If you're a scientist, you're probably familiar with Bozeman Science up there. Um, if you're not a scientist, but you have children that ask you questions about their homework, this is actually a great resource for you to watch this video. He explains things very well. And you can see he has his face there, um, and his videos are very popular. You can see he has a few more YouTube views than I have. Um, and then, of course, Crash Course. Uh, they're great. I think they're, they're very funny. So that's another option. Oh, in our textbook, OpenStax. They have a lot of different freely available textbooks, very much like a standard science textbook that students would pay for, um, but available um, online. So the, you could print it if you want to. I don't recommend that, but it's there for the students to download for free. Um, and that's a great resource uh, that I use. The one that I use is Concepts of Biology. They have many different titles. Um, so assessments. Just real quick, of course, in the traditional class, you can um, keep track of participation in the class. You have homework, perhaps writing projects. We try to emphasize writing in our courses. And then in-class exams. For our blended learning, we have those online quizzes that are over the modules. Um, I still assess in-class participation. I have them doing a lot of group projects, so that's what I mean by assignments there. Um, so the virtual labs and um, other things that we do in class, we have time to do that, of course, exams. For our online class, same thing. To keep track of the participation, that's one thing where we have to change things up. So I just put one tool we're using, VoiceThread. You may be familiar. I know one of the other speakers this morning mentioned it. If you're not familiar, essentially, VoiceThread, you can put up um, some text or an image or a video, and then students can comment on it either with text or with voice comments. And so 
I had more of a personal feel if you can hear all the students making voice comments and then you can make a voice comment back to their comment. Um, so that's a great tool. For our exams for the online course, we're going to be using Proctor U, which is uh, a paid service where um, someone very carefully monitors your student taking the exam wherever they are in the world. So that's what we're using for our exams. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to uh, make sure I thank these people. All of this uh, technology was overwhelming to me at first, but our instructional technologist, Armand and Andrew, um, really helped out a lot. Um, also, I've been um, working with a colleague, Lori Nicholas. One thing I'll mention very quickly is these online modules that we made, Lori and I split them up, and we made one instructional video for each core topic that we know we're always going to teach this core topic in life science. We're always going to talk about mitosis and cancer. So then we have a library of these that we can use. We didn't have to make them all for ourselves. And then every semester, each of us changes some of the topics. Like this semester, we want to talk about Zika virus. So we can just add those things on later, and we can go back to our library. Um, if we have adjuncts teaching the course, we can share our library with them. They can use these um, core modules um, 